So last year was the first time that the John Bedini's Zero Force motor um, was ever disclosed in all its full circuitry, and, and we even had an opportunity to release some of John Bedini's notes going back to the late 70s, early 80s, and, yeah. and the first time that anybody has ever seen those, and John had always kept them to himself. And, um, and so that's what, where the presentation came from last year. Over the period of the last year, um, Yarrow heads uh, continued on this path. This is self-explanatory. I don't even have to go through this, but everybody can read, and uh, this is essentially the layout of what we're going to do. When you first conceptualize this, when you look this, at this cloverleaf, this cloverleaf shows the interaction and the play of the magnetic fields that are induced within his zero force motor. But there is something very interesting that happens internally in it. 2016, zero force motor, created by Peter Lindemann, oh, I guess in 2006 or somewhere in that uh, era. This is John Bedini's baby, very nice, very well put together. I went in and spent quite a bit of time and we finally produced this guy right here. So now that you have the basics of the machine, it's like, how does it work? This is a slide, uh, well, this is a uh, diagram that was put together by Peter Lindemann. And it's, it's very self-explanatory. Uh, it shows you essentially, here are the two coils. And here are the rotors, the rotor with the magnet configuration, north, south, north, south, south. And when you fire this up, let's say, for example, uh, in this mode right here, let's say we fire this up, uh, energize it so we create a south face right here of the coil. All of a sudden, you have a kick. That rotor then spins up to this point, and then the coil stops firing. And this is the attractive node, and this is the repulsive node. We're talking the yin and yang of things here. There's no music with this. This is the machine in operation. We got it locked in fairly well uh, in this instance. This is pushing somewhere around 8,000 RPM. This right here, what you're seeing is uh, my computer that's taking amperage direct, directly from the, from the coil uh, through a TET sensor that we have. It's a small Hall Effect device that I love using because I don't have access to a, a $4,000 oscilloscope except for once or twice a year. Uh, and I use this. Now, a little bit more detail now. This is getting into the nitty gritty here. Uh, you ask yourself, I ask myself, is what happens when we jack up progressively the voltage on the machine?